Oh yes, welcome Falta, bienvenue, bienvenido, and welcome to the 2022 Think Languages event. Today, you and about 15,000 other TY students from all across Ireland are taking part in this exciting celebration of languages and cultures. Coming up, funny man Killian Sunderman will be telling us about his love for languages as well as giving us an insight into German culture. We'll be travelling to Salamanca in Spain to find out what life is like for an Erasmus student. Content creator and TikTok star Mandy Cherie will be telling us all about her love for the French language and how it has helped her achieve the life of her dreams. We'll be seeing how his passion for gaming and film made Ethan O'Brien realise that it's never too late to learn a language. Plus, CEO of the Olympic Federation of Ireland, Peter Sherrard, will be telling us how speaking fluent French and Italian has helped him throughout his career. This is the fifth year of the Think Languages event, and around 35,000 students and nearly 500 schools will have taken part in everything from fun workshops and music activities to competitions, all while learning about the benefits of foreign language skills. So here's a little taste of what you can expect. I think it's really important this day because we learn about the new cultures and languages around the world, not only the languages like dances, uh, food. We're doing a college workshop and my favourite thing so far today has probably been the breakfast we got this morning. Yeah, the breakfast is pretty nice. It was fun because, you know, it's something that you don't really get to do every day. The language widely spoken in the world and it definitely has a place in Ireland anyway. Today we had our workshops, we did loads of languages such as Arabic and Italian and we did Taekwondo and Japanese and I really did have a really good day today. I just did the Irish Sign Language workshop, it's like this is F and you just put it across and there's also from, so it's the same thing and so I would be from Donegal. I actually want to learn Arabic now, I really want to learn it and like dedicate myself to learning languages more because before I wasn't really like focused on it but now I really want to focus on it. There was one point where I tried to learn Japanese but because like there's like three different alphabets I kind of gave up but after today I think I'll try to learn it again. Having a foreign language can help open the door to so many different career opportunities both here in Ireland and abroad. There's jobs in teaching, interpreting, law, humanitarian work, tourism, business, journalism, science and engineering, to name but a few. Foreign language skills are a massive advantage in jobs like these and many others. Ethan O'Brien has managed to combine his love of gaming with his love for all things Japanese. And he has turned these passions into a career. My name is Ethan O'Brien. I'm a fluent in Japanese and I work as a Japanese to English translator. I translate Japanese to English, mainly in games. The vast majority of translators nowadays would work remotely. So I work here in Westmead. I work from home. So I've been playing games for as long as I can remember really. And I suppose that influence has led me towards this form of translation as well. It's one of the more interesting mediums you can translate because it is in a way kind of a puzzle. You've got like a lot of different characters with different ways of speaking, they might have different backgrounds and you essentially get to be a, a writer. You've got to kind of inhabit these characters. It's, it is especially exciting when you get to work with characters you know, with stories you're, you know of and also stuff that you know other people enjoy. While I was studying my degree in fine art in Limerick, one of the things I was studying was filmmaking and narrative. And the narrative for Japanese movies was quite different. And that kind of got me looking at a lot more Japanese media and how Japanese narratives are structured. I always had an interest in languages and learning languages and kind of enjoying going somewhere new, wanting to have that kind of experience. I decided to go to Japan. My job was to teach English. I was an English instructor in Tokyo. After a few months of that, 
I kind of realized I needed to kind of get serious about learning the language if I really wanted to get more out of living there and the relationships you could build with people. I started taking classes. I started listening to radio shows and watching a lot more television, trying to read more books and articles. You learn a new language and you kind of have to become a new person because if you're growing up in Ireland, you know you've learned English, you've learned it from your family, the people around you, you've picked up all these habits, but those habits won't translate over to a different culture and a different language. And you learn a lot of things about your own habits and how you normally do things. And you kind of gain this kind of outside perspective. After two years, I started thinking, okay, I'm really interested in this. I, you know, I could see myself doing this for a long time. What can I do to kind of leverage that interest? And I thought maybe something like translation studies would be something that I could use in a lot of different roles. So as well as games, I have worked on translating uh, manga, so comic books, Japanese comic books. I've worked on marketing materials, uh, some social media posts. I don't think it's ever too late to pick up a language, even if it's one that's more intimidating like Japanese. Um, I didn't start learning the language until I was 23. If you're in transition here, if you're 60 and you maybe you don't know what you want to do yet, look up what kind of opportunities you have. I wasn't aware at the time all the opportunities that I would have had if maybe if I wanted to learn a language, if it could be any skill. The gaming industry is obviously huge. It's grown a huge amount. It's continuing to grow. You're seeing a lot of growth, not just in consoles and PC games, but like mobile games have become absolutely huge. Languages is a huge benefit if you want to work in gaming. I think they're going to add more languages to games and it's going to only grow. With almost 22 million likes on TikTok, Mandy Cherie is Ireland's very own Emily in Paris. She studied French for the Leaving Cert and first travelled to Paris on Erasmus. She fell in love with the city and has made a life for herself there as a content creator. Mandy believes that her decision to learn French has changed her life. Bonjour, my name is Mandy Sherpy and I am a content creator originally from Donegal, living in Paris, France. So my job is basically to upload videos and photos on Instagram and TikTok. I work with a lot of brands as well, which is a lot of fun because I can work on cool projects with them. I often promote clothes and makeup and travel as well. I just am really, really grateful for the career that I built. I am fluent in French, but my journey learning languages kind of got off to like a bumpy start because for my junior cert, I did German. And I was absolutely useless at German. I didn't know what it was. I think like the grammar or the vocabulary just didn't really click with me that much. But I really loved French culture and I was really interested in kind of like the fashion, the way the language sounds, like the food, even traveling to France just sounded like such a dream to me. So after my junior cert, I decided to change. And then I ended up carrying it on into university. So I was studying French at university when I was doing a TSM in Trinity, I did English and French. And now I live in Paris and I speak French every day. So that one decision kind of led me here, which is really cool to think about. Erasmus literally changed my life. I went on that study abroad when I was in my second year of university. I was able to meet different people from all over the world who were learning French as well. Like it was just a really eye-opening experience. I kind of felt like the world was so huge and I had no idea just how many cool people I would be able to meet before. It was the best year of my life. I decided to stay. So I transferred universities and I just continued studying here. So I did my bachelor's here in Paris and I did a master's degree as well, which I just finished. So my master's was in social media and web marketing. And it was a lot of fun because I was able to do internships. I worked in the fashion industry. It's really, really cool how many different things I was able to do just like by knowing French. Right now I'm walking by the Louvre. To me it is so cool how I walk by here so often because literally if I never learned French I don't know what my life would be like. Like this is one of the most amazing monuments and amazing museums in the world. 
Knowing the French language definitely improved my experience living in France because I was able to meet some of my best friends in the world and they might not necessarily know English. So being able to communicate with them was just so great because we were able to form friendships that way. Even just for opportunities career-wise as well, like being able to speak English and French was something that so many people thought was a great skill to have and it really, really opened so many doors to me and so many opportunities as well. And that just made my experience so great. So the next thing on my itinerary today is to get some outfit pics. I came here to the Eiffel Tower because the brand wanted kind of like a Parisian look. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shoot this look. For me, I really think that learning languages has helped me develop other skills other than just being able to communicate in a different language. Like even just for my self-confidence, it's helped so much because in the past I was a really shy person. I would always be afraid of speaking and especially speaking a different language. I would be afraid to make a mistake or I would be just afraid to say something silly or for, like to say something and for it to sound weird with my accent or whatever. But now I feel like I've really overcome that because I've kind of learned from my mistakes and now I can speak fluently. And I think making mistakes, it's kind of a rite of passage. You have to do it to be able to move on from it and to be able to learn from it and grow from it. So I think now if I ever like do something wrong or if I ever I kind of make a mistake, I, I don't care anymore. I just know that it's human and everybody does it. And I think that's something that's really important that comes with learning a language. So if I could meet 16 year old Mandy now, I would tell her that the world is so much bigger than that little town you grew up in in Ireland. Like there are so many things waiting for you and there's so many possibilities you can have. You just shouldn't be afraid to go for things in life. I would say that learning French has had a really, really positive impact on my life because it's brought so many good things and opened so many doors to me that I don't think would have been open to me or even available to me if I had only known English. And I just really feel like learning languages can only bring you things. It'll never take anything away from you in your life. It'll only bring you good things. Well. Comedian Killian Sunderman's funny takes on German and Irish culture have helped put him on the map. From a young age, he realised the value of language skills and made sure to advance these skills during school and in college. So, who better than the man himself to tell us why? Herzlich willkommen. Thank you for coming, Killian. Today we're very happy to have you. You have nine million likes on TikTok, and you're well known for your kind of like quirky rural Ireland kind of countryside reviews and then on the other hand kind of language and culture stuff as well. What drew you to that kind of content? Yeah well first of all those nine million likes they're, they're all bots I paid for them. So, Every single yeah. one. Nine million euro <laughs> in debt. <laughs> yeah it's a euro bot. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no Going yeah right. the, uh, I, I kind of like um, started making videos about things that were in my surrounding area so the first would have been I was in uh, the countryside, so I started making videos about the countryside, and then like my family are German, so I started making videos about the differences between the Germans and Irish people. Like an obvious difference would be Irish people offer something to each other, they expect the person to refuse, and then you offer again if you really want to give it to them. It's kind of an unwritten rule, yeah, almost, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. You kind of go, oh no, I couldn't, even like couldn't you're possibly. starving, like yeah. if there's an Irish person in the desert and someone offered them water, and they've been like, they've been in there for 40 days and 40 nights, they'd be like, no, no, I'm grand. No, couldn't I'm possibly. Fine. I'm fine, and slowly yeah. die. Whereas in German, like they're much more direct and they're open about their, uh, the way they speak. Often when we say things, uh, we mean the complete opposite. Like, let's say someone's staying over in your house and you're just drinking tea and uh, they've been there a while and you want them to leave. Like, the way that you get them to leave is you go, so do you want another cup of tea? <laughs> Which a German would interpret that as, do you want another cup of tea? Whereas an Irish person goes, oh, this person is like, get the hell out of my house. <laughs> yeah. like, you so you already spoke German and then you decided to study French and mm -hmm. continue that on into college. I went to DIT uh, and I did film and broadcasting. Yeah. And then they had, they had the option to do a language with it, which I was like, that's kind of a no brainer as a minor. Right. So uh, you added it on. So you chose the, the film yeah. and broadcast. Yeah, so I, I had French as an extra. The main reason was because uh, you get to do an Erasmus. If you choose a language, you get to do the Erasmus usually. 
So I went so to Paris. Where? Yeah, went Par to Paris. Ooh la la, okay. Um, it was very nice. I really enjoyed it. So as our, I'm going to call you a linguistic expert, mm -hmm. which I don't think is an overstatement. That's not at all. No. Yeah. Um, would you have any favourite, well open up to phrases and words. Well my dad, uh, when we were kids and we were being very bold, he used to call us Die Letzte Affe. He said, Du bist Die Letzte Affe. Oh great. Um, die Letzte Affe means uh, you're the last monkey. Yeah. Uh, as in like, you know, everyone Terrible else has evolved kind of. to uh, oh. to human, but you are the last. <laughs> <laughs> which I, I always thought was funny. And Affe Theater means like, you know, uh, monkey theatre, which is quite but like funny. drama kind of. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like those kind of phrases, I quite, I quite like. That's oh, stuff I love that. They used that. to give out to us. Like I have a bit of German, and with the, like the daddy das, I'm always nervous of like getting it wrong or being judged or making a mistake or anything mm. like that. What would you say to people who are? who have the bit of enough to probably, you know, conversational language, but are a bit nervous of making those mistakes. The best way to learn a language is to not be afraid of making mistakes. If you say das Boot or der Boot, like a German person is going to know you're talking about a boat. Like they're not going to be like, what, I don't, what is it that you use the wrong, like, you know, yeah, yeah. article, what is going on here? Like they're going to know what you're talking about. I mean, you'll notice as an English speaker, you hear all these accents, you hear French accents, you hear German accents, you hear Polish accents. You're very good at picking up what people are saying. You're very good at intuitively going like, oh, you're talking about this. Yeah. And that's what everyone can do in all languages. No one's ever going to be offended unless they're a terrible person, in which case you don't want to be talking to them. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, the, <laughs> like oh, don't be afraid. It's the best way to learn language is just to, to um, just be obnoxiously confident. Okay. It's the best way of doing it. Really. That's how you've gotten by so far. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And um, what advice would you have for someone who wants to to kind of immerse themselves in that culture who hasn't got the chance maybe to go to France or to Germany at the moment? Yeah, but I mean like you don't need to go to a country to immerse yourself in yeah. the culture. Like that's there, there's the internet now. Let's yeah. say you want to learn Italian, like you have access to Italy. Like you can just go onto Netflix you know, click the Italian section, then all you have to do is just stick English subtitles on it and you're experiencing Italian. Obviously, like, you're big on TikTok. Mm. There's a few things you can do there as well, isn't there, to kind of... Oh, yeah, I got... Well, TikTok just, like, popped up a message and said, like, what languages can you speak? And, uh, oh, they obviously knew who they were talking yeah, to. Yeah, they were like, I was like, hmm, <laughs> well, you, where's TikTok? the list? Uh, how much <laughs> time do you have? Um, but I, uh, I was, like, uh, ticked, like, German and French, and now right. I started getting like French videos and German videos, and they're hilarious. And I was like, gonna say, are they as funny as the Irish ones? Oh yeah, they're so funny, but obviously the Irish Not videos are the funniest in the world. Specifically your videos. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, would you have any advice then for someone who is at school now, like a transition year student, who's kind of choosing their subjects for six years, say at this point, for the leaving cert. Mm. Would you have any advice for them at this point? Yeah, I mean, like, I guess you're in a really unique situation right now where you, like, literally have to go to school and you you have the option of learning a language for free you know from yeah. teachers who are going to teach you like several hours a week like you know any adult would kill for that to be able yeah. to like learn a language <laughs> like trust me it will like you will enjoy it and yeah. uh, it will open your mind um, yeah and choose german obviously like, obviously don't, choose it no don't <laughs> bother with french or spanish well like, you speak french now come on dead languages okay dead languages. <laughs> german's really the one you want to focus german's on. a living language yeah, it's a yeah. living language it's cool like berlin oh my god so hip, hip and so cool yeah so definitely just learn german and screw all the other languages. okay great yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned with Killian, there are lots of different types of college courses that feature languages. To get a sense of what's out there, you can log on to careersportal.ie and use the Languages Connect filter to show all of the courses that include a language option. Lots of people even start a new language during college. Now, immersing yourself in a culture is one of the best ways to improve your language skills. And if you like the idea of traveling and meeting new people, then maybe Erasmus might be right up your street. Up next is DCE student Gintare, who is currently on Erasmus in Spain, to talk us through what her experience has been like. Hello, my name is Gintare and I'm a fourth year student from DCU currently doing my Erasmus in the city of Salamanca in Spain. I'm a native Lithuanian speaker and I took up Spanish in secondary school uh, at third year and I went on to do it at third level as well. On my first year of college uh, I had to pick a second language uh, to go with my Spanish 
So I've decided to go for Chinese because Chinese seemed like a language that I would never do otherwise in my life. And I was like, why not take that opportunity? It's not as scary as everyone thinks it's to be. Like you learn it bit by bit. So it's, it's manageable, but it's very fun. So Erasmus is an opportunity for students in third level to go abroad for a year and study the language that they've been doing at the university. So you pick a language and you move for a year and uh, you do classes mostly to, through the language that you're studying. Living in the country that you've always been learning about, it's amazing. I am here with uh, three of uh, my course mates from Ireland. Uh, so John, Laura and Darren are here living with me. We all do on the same course and uh, so it's, it's been great to kind of have their support and kind of discuss everyday uh, life with them as well. Moving has been an interesting experience. Here in Salamanca, like, you have to speak uh, in Spanish all the time. Um, like I, I, probably in the bigger town like uh, Madrid or Barcelona they would probably speak in English but here in Salamanca it's a smaller city so you are forced to speak Spanish every day so it's, it's great. <laughs> A typical day uh, on a weekday would be waking up uh, and going to classes uh, in the mornings. It's only 10 minutes walk and you walk through all these amazing buildings and architecture and through Plaza Mayor, which is, uh, which is amazing. Um, so we go to college, we have our classes. Uh, most of my classes are through Spanish. People are very uh, supportive and helpful. And if you don't know something or if you're lost in a class, the chances are high that people are gonna send you notes and be very helpful and help you study as well. Uh, but my favorite part of the day is in the afternoon, as it is traditional, we usually take siestas and we sleep for a few hours, have a rest. And then uh, as we rest, we do our homework, we study, and then the night uh, life begins very late here. Uh, at night, at 10 o'clock, it's normal for people to sit at the bars uh, with their family, with children, and have their little tapas and dinners. And that's been very uh, interesting to see. Languages definitely help to grow my personality. And one of the main reasons is uh, having uh, having met so many people, people change you and having the language to communicate with people is what's helping me to do that. Because languages open up so many opportunities in the future for you, from meeting people to having to experience a completely different culture and living in a foreign country to finding better job opportunities in the future, even though you might go into business or other fields, but having the language will open up so many doors. And that's it for me from Salamanca in Spain. Adios! He has worked as Head of Communications at Ryanair, Director of Communications for the FAI, and is now the CEO of the Olympic Federation of Ireland. Peter Sherrard is also fluent in Italian and French, and these skills have helped him get to where he is today. Could you tell us a little bit about where we are? Yeah, we're in a very special place. Yeah. So one of the really nice things about my job in the Olympic Federation of Ireland is that you get to see the Olympic and Paralympic athletes training firsthand. This is the Irish Institute of Sport and it's a really top class facility. It's hosted a huge number of big names, Kelly Harrington. Kelly would be training on a daily basis with the other boxers in the programme. A lot of our swimmers would be based here. It's really, most of our sports come here to, to make sure that they're able to perform at the top level. You're the CEO, so what does a CEO do exactly? Yeah, yeah. For people you might not know. Good question. <laughs> yeah. um, around 50% of it would be commercial, so okay. you're, you're trying to attract new sponsorships. Then uh, the remainder would be uh, on the performance side, trying to make sure that we have everything in place and there's no stone unturned, so the athletes are looked after to the highest level. And really, it's a bit like running a small business. You travel so much with your work. Do you find that having the extra few languages does make it easier to maybe build connections with people you work with? I think to get to where I've arrived at in my career, 
uh, languages have been extremely useful. My languages are French and Italian yeah. and uh, you know the headquarters for the Olympic movement is based in Lausanne in Switzerland which is the French speaking region of Switzerland. Um, our next two Olympic Games actually Paris 2024 uh, obviously will be very useful French. from a French <laughs> point of view and Milano Cortina in 2026 for the Winter Olympic Games. For example, earlier this year we went to visit two uh, cities quite close to Paris and I was able to talk to them in French and it just made a massive difference in terms of winning their trust and also getting inside information that probably wouldn't be given to somebody knocking on the door without their language. Yeah. I mean, at a different stage in my career, I worked in football and I, I worked very closely with uh, Giovanni Trapattoni and Marco Tardelli. Giovanni was the uh, Ireland team manager yeah. and Marco was his assistant. Having Italian and being able to talk to them uh, in their own language uh, made a huge difference. So you speak French and Italian. Yeah. I'm going to ask you now kind of a difficult question. Yes. Could you describe yourself in three Italian words? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sì, sono irlandese, irlandese del nord, originario e um, vivo a Dublino da molti anni e mi piace, mi piace parlare um, l'italiano quando posso. Yeah. Okay, the accent. Was yeah. the accent difficult to, to master because you sound like a real Italian? Well, they would tell you probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so where did your love of languages start? Well, it's a funny story, you know, like when I was uh, the age of most of your listeners, I hadn't really taken languages that seriously. It was a school subject like yeah. any other. And then when I was 15, my Irish teacher, uh, and I wasn't particularly good at Irish, by the way, <laughs> came up to me and said, look, uh, would you like to do an exchange with the French family? I sort of thought, yeah, that might be interesting. And so I went over to them for a month, and then he came back for a month. Just it, It's suddenly not really a subject that you're looking at through books, but it's a real life thing. Yeah. And you remember all those things, and you get more motivated. So you learned French at school? Yes. And then when did you go on to learn the Italian? So I, I really wanted to take up another language. I thought, why not go for Italian? And I took that up at university and then I, I went on. My first jobs were in Italy with uh, Bordbia, Tourism Ireland and Ryanair. Um, and that was all based in Italy for about five years. And I wouldn't have got those opportunities to work at that level and to move so quickly in my career if it wasn't for languages. Um, there were very few people who, who had Italian and English and uh, if you had that you were able to move forward a lot more quickly and I had such good fun doing it as well you know it changed my life yeah honestly so we're in this amazing sporting facility here I suppose there are probably some parallels you could draw between someone training for a sport and someone studying or learning a language the Olympic athletes are incredibly yeah, and Paralympic a athletes incredibly rare bunch and they're they're very driven um, but having said that, they're very um, used to failure and it's their resilience and their perseverance in the face of those failures that makes them who they are. Yeah. I mean, for every success that you see, uh, they've probably had about eight or nine failures that have really hit them quite hard, but they've actually picked themselves up and, and got up and, and uh, continued. So I suppose from a language point of view, uh, you know, you are going to make mistakes, yeah. you're not going to be perfect straight away. And sometimes I think kids these days put a lot of pressure on themselves to be perfect because yeah. everything is kind of presented as being so perfect to them. And I know it from my own daughters who are about the same age, that they would be, they would have the ability to communicate, but they might want to hold back because they want to be perfect. Yeah. And the first thing I'd say is don't, yeah. just, just try. Make those mistakes. People actually enjoy the mistakes and sometimes there are some really funny clangers. Some people say, oh, but I'm not good at languages. We're all capable of languages. All of us learned by listening growing up as babies yeah. uh, to our parents. Think about it. Think how many words you know you, you use. So it's exactly the same way for learning a language. So I'd recommend that you do a language in your Leaving Cert because I think it will enrich your life in lots of different ways. Well, that's it for our opening ceremony. But for you, well, your day is just beginning. We hope you have an excellent time and that you enjoy the Think Languages event. Hopefully we've given you a taste of some of the personal, social, cultural and career benefits of foreign language skills. Help spread the word by using the hashtag ThinkLanguages and you can follow Languages Connect on social media for all the latest updates. So for now, slán, ciao, adios, tschüss.